Hey there, fellow plant nerds. Welcome back to Planet Botanic. Uh, this is episode four. And if you didn't, if you weren't here for the last episode, this is what we worked on. Uh, well, I say we. I, I shouldn't say we. <laughs> I had somebody come in uh, by the name of Kinderly, and he built this beautiful estate for us, um, which I think is is just perfect. <laughs> it's perfect in every way. It's something that I could not do, and he was able to capture the beauty of uh, of the Huntington Library and the Huntington Estate. Um, in surprising detail and surprising scale too. I mean, this building is is pretty well proportioned. So today, like I promised, we're going to be working in a different garden. Um, it's been fun working in the center here, but it's time to branch out a little bit now that we have a point of reference. And where we're gonna go is this little area here. I think you remember the channel garden um, that I had, I think I had mentioned in episode two um, which I wanted to pull some of the ideas from the Getty uh, and the Central Gardens into a garden of my own, um, trying to fix some of the problems that I see with the with the Getty. And here's 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 where I think, and I think I finally figured out why I don't really like the the gardens at the the Central Garden at the Getty, is because Robert Irwin is not a gardener or a landscape architect or he doesn't typically work with plants. He is what's called an installation artist. And so you had an artist building a garden and it is visually stunning and it is beautiful, but when you're in it, it just feels, it doesn't feel like you are a part of it. And so that's what I want to kind of fix. Um, <laughs> as if it's a problem. A lot of people, a lot of people like the, that sort of like showpiece type garden. I've had a lot of people uh, tell me about Gardens by the Bay in Singapore. I took a look at it. I it's mm, no, it's, it's not my style. It feels um, it feels artificial and a little garish. I think. Um, so I I I, I want to keep the scale down a little bit, but I still want to have some of that really cool geometric form. All right. We're starting to shape up here a little bit. Um, I Here is my thought on this. So I wanted to create a, a bit of a dividing line between the old estate and where the new gardens are gonna be. You can see that this is the, this is my ruler for the, uh, the new garden that's going to be there. Um, and in this garden, I want a channel to kind of come across with really sharp angles um, and then go into a pool but this is not going to be all water. This is actually going to be mostly limestone with ripples um, and flowers and, and stuff like that. And so the water is just going to trickle down into a into a reservoir that that is underneath um, a bunch of pebbles and stuff like that. So the water just disappears completely. Um, and then the water effect is replaced with all the concentric ripple rings. But being that this is an old state, and being that the the styles are you know fairly different altogether, um, I wanted to make sure that there was buffer or a barrier, and so I wanted some of the old estate, and that's why I have these California live oaks as part of the estate, and then you've got this retaining wall that's going to lift the land up just a little bit more, and as more bushes and stuff are in, you won't even be able to see most of the garden because you can you can just see from here, the garden is sitting up. And so when you're in the estate, you really can't tell what's going on over there. From the top, it's not that far away. But when you're actually in it, in the garden, um, you can see the sight lines just disappear completely. And that's what I wanted. What's going to help that as well is that this path, and I don't know if we get to this today, but this path is going to come around and there's going to be kind of an, an arbor that runs through the, the perimeter of this retaining wall. Um, so there'll be more stuff to kind of offset what's going on up here, which is going to be really modern and slick. and I think it's going to be really beautiful. All right, here we are a little closer. You can see that I've got the channel in now and you can see what I wanted here. I wanted these lines to be acute angles um, and I wanted all the angles to be different. So it looks very um, unsettling almost with the perfect circle in the bottom. This uh, kind of cuts through, uh, which is gonna be really cool. And then you can kind of see the effect happening here. Um, you've got these concentric circles that are forming the labyrinth. And that's exactly what the Azalea Garden is doing um, at the base of the Central Gardens in the Getty. But in this, in my version, you'll actually be able to walk through 
Um, and I think what I'm gonna have is some sculptures um, in here, some abstract sculptures. I think I'm gonna pull from uh, the water garden type theme and maybe do some water lilies or something like that. I think that'll be really cool. The concentric circles are supposed to be, so I've used the just the bedding flowers, but I found if I color them the right way, they start to look like sedum, in particular uh, the species sedum spurium which is a ground cover type sedum um, that stretches and comes in all sorts of different colors. If we take a look here, uh, you can see this, these are all sedum spuriums. And you can see that like Dragon's Blood has this really intense pink bloom on it. Um, the bloom on sedums last a long time. They can sometimes stretch. Um, so they can start at, in one area and stretch to another depending on how the light is hitting or how the heat is bouncing off. Um, you can have them in these really nice deep purples. You can have them, yeah, like that guy. You can also have them in really light uh, greens. Um, you can have them really, really light or almost like chartreuse. So using these colors, um, I can get a pretty good effect so you look at them now, they, they look a little uh, uniform uh, just because of the way that I had to do the, the circles, um, which is basically copying and pasting the same cross over and over and over again. Um, but I think with a little bit of finagling, I think I can get them to look a little bit better, especially if I start blending colors together. And then using the path trick that I uh, called out in the ladies garden rescue, uh, which I think is the first episode of that series. Um, you can see that I've created a very smooth path and so I wanted the path to still be next to the river But not so close because I have this other path that I'm using as gravel which was going to fight with it um, But I have it coming over and then the river comes down um, and then the path is over the river and Then by the time you get to the bottom the path is right in line with the river All right, you can see we're getting a little closer with the sculptures and I've created the water lily sculptures I think they look pretty awesome um, this was made with uh, just a few of the wooden planks um, and then colored them a uh, darker color so it looks like they are like metal or something like that. Um, have three different colors there just to symbolize the, the different colors that you can get with water lilies. I don't know, it, this might be a little too colorful. I might actually remove um, the color entirely and just do like a rusted uh, uh, iron or something like that. I think that might actually look a little bit better. But you can kind of get an idea of how I want uh, I want you to approach this garden. So you, you kind of come in, um, and as you come in, you're you're intrigued by the patterns on the ground for sure. But you're also intrigued by these big sculptures. And so then you kind of come down, and then you'll have to work. You walk your way around the maze. And I haven't built all of the the openings yet, but they'll pretty much be. I mean. Really, you probably could walk over it, but out of respect, you would want to just kind of walk the maze. And then once you get to one in the center, you can look at the others and then, oh, maybe I want to go look at this. And that is the sense of discovery that I feel is missing from my source material. Here you can see the pedal that I started with. Um, I'll show you how to do it real quick. So eight pieces. And then I just flipped it around with the angle snap on. Make sure that is exactly opposite. Doesn't have to touch because they are, once you get a bunch of them in there, that's gonna look just fine. And then take that whole thing, turn it into a cross, take that whole thing, turn it into a, another cross, take that whole thing. Do that, take that whole thing, do that. And there you go. That's how you create. Now what I could do, actually pull this up, turn this over, and it becomes a lovely lotus type bowl. Which could be a really cool uh, effect. It could be the beginning of a dome too. You could turn that upside down, and that could be a special dome on the inside of a greenhouse or something like that. Here you can see I've started um, laying the foot walls in, um, the retaining walls and stuff like that to make sure that all this land, because it is gonna be stepping up along with it. Um, I don't know if I had made that clear, but it's not gonna be free floating like that. It's all gonna be connected to, to this uh, terrain that's moving up. It's a bit of a challenge, I'll be honest, um, because the channel is a different uh, level than the actual ground is. 
um, and the ground is moving up, so I had to remove the path again, and I'll have to put the path back in. The game doesn't really like my path, the way I do my path systems, it sometimes wig wigs out a little bit. Um, but that's all part of it, of layering up this this whole design. You can kind of see that it's it's looking a little bit better. It's looking less stark, which is the idea. <laughs> You're only supposed to really see the channel from, from higher up, but when you get down into the water garden itself, it should basically disappear from view. I mean, you pretty much only see it on the final return. And you can see that the water is moving its way down, and then when it reaches the sump area, um, the water is moving through the pebbles, which would be connected to a pump down here, um, and a reservoir. And that is what's called a pondless uh, water feature. And then, yeah, I changed the color of the water lilies to that kind of uh, rusted iron, which I think looks a lot better. Um, just makes it a little bit more cohesive. And it'll allow the colors to really stand out in the concentric circles themselves in the sedum garden. Here I've started working with some uh, some plantings, and I decided that instead of doing something with a lot of different textures, I want the color of this garden to come out um, a lot more. I want I want this to be the impact here, and so the the plantings I have decided on are very very strict. Um, one of the shows that I watch, which is uh, Ooh, little big ideas little spaces or something like that by Monty Don he he kind of stresses the idea that a garden need not more than seven different elements um, at probably most and so I've, I've taken that to heart here and I've got about seven different textures there might be a little bit more here and there but there's basically seven distinct textures um, this uh, diamond willow this sage, which has the blue, this buckthorn, which has that kind of wispy uh, yellow, this uh, reed, which is, which I can just consider a grass. Um, it just looks like a grass head to me. So one, two, three, four, bamboo, five. Um, and then there will be two more that I can play with, but pretty much restricting myself to a, a very, very um, stoic palette because it just makes the garden a little bit more uniform. And since I'm covering a large area, um, I don't want it to look so haphazard. I want it to really, really stay united. The nice thing about these plantings too is that it once again is obscuring the, the river itself. So really you only, you only get to see it as it emerges from the base here. And then you can tell that it goes up. But if you follow the, the path itself, it's going to disappear when you get around to this side and then it's going to reappear. Um, and then by the time you get up here, it's actually going to cover it. Um, so you cross you cross the, the one at that side. And this part of it, this part of the channel is gonna be a little bit more uh, loud. Um, the water is going to be uh, a little bit rougher because of just the, you can see the, the slope that it's at. Um, so I think that'll be really cool too, because that'll give you a different sound. And then as you get to this channel, which is a lot uh, shallower of a channel, um, the water's gonna slow down quite a bit and you get that kind of lapping sound instead of um, something with a little bit more rushing sound. Okay, I apologize guys, this is a big jump. Um, the reason being is because I thought I was going to break this up into two episodes, two parts, um, but I decided against it, and by the time that I had realized that, I was too far in. So here we are. <laughs> you can tell that it's a little different than, uh, than where we started. Um, yeah, because it's done. <laughs> I did a lot of the work off camera, and here is the result. Um, yeah, <laughs> doesn't it look good? <laughs> you can see that I've got the, the colors and the rings now, um, so that they look a little bit more, uh, a little bit more like sedum. Um, so you can see the, the really hot pink blooms are supposed to be when the sedum is actually flowering. And then the green is kind of your, your normal, then you've got some of this burgundy, which is that other color of like dragon's blood sedum. Um, and yeah, I think it looks really awesome just the way the colors all pop together. And that's exactly what I wanted. You have this big limestone base, and then you have these really hot colors, and then when you look up, 
you have this really calming sea of green um, that is just across. You've got a little bit of water uh, sound from the channel itself. You also have these little water features at each of the water lilies so that when you kind of come down these ramps, and I can actually show you now. Here we go, walking down this ramp. In fact, let me get into Tetris Cam, hold on. Okay, so here you are walking down, and you take this ramp down. That structure right there, that's gonna be something different. It's gonna be the tea house, um, that'll be in a different episode. But you kinda of come down, and now you're in the labyrinth. And you kinda of walk around, you wanna to get to, let's say, that water feature there. So you walk through. And you can take this one here. And you walk around that one. And then you've got this beautiful vantage point as your reward for coming through the labyrinth. Um, you see people seated there eating at their tables. And then if you want to come over this way, I'm just going to hop over these real quick. There you are. You can get right next to the water. The water is not a pool, so you can step right into it. You can put your hands in it. It's not going to hurt because all that gravel is, um, is suspended over a, a pool. And so the water is just flowing right through. Now you can take a look around, and then when you're ready, you just go back the same way you came. If you want to get to the other side of the garden that's splitting with this little boardwalk here, then you take this side. And just little differences here and there across the way. Then when you're ready, you can uh, either go up the ramp, or if you are coming from a, a garden at the top here, let me just run this way. Just don't look at that transformer, we're still not in true sandbox. And here we are at the top here, you can tell that the water has uh, has changed sound, has changed texture. And so it flows a little bit faster going down this way. And then as you continue to walk, you can tell that the sound changes and it goes more to a whooshing or a, a, a tinkling sound. Isn't that cool? The other really cool thing you have here is that uh, when you are looking, when you're walking down this path here, you can see the estate. Um, you can just see the ruse of the estate. You can see the portico a little bit. And then you can also get a, a hint at the uh, water garden down there itself. You can, you can get an idea, and that is going to kind of direct you. Not only is the slope, which is taking you that way, but, um, but the idea that you want to go see what that is. From here, you can see the you can see the uh, channel because you are standing over it at this point, and you also have that vantage point on this side with the foamier water. And as you walk down, you should really just kind of feel or see the see the channel here and there. You get an idea that you're moving towards that garden, which is really cool. And the other neat thing about this garden too is that this side, this uh, right side is meant to be more of a kind of loose uh, just area that has grown in, um, has been maintained a little bit, but not a whole lot. So you can kind of see other elements. Um, you can see the, the ponderosa pines, you can see the palms, uh, you can see the live oaks um, in the back there. There you go, you can see them right there. And then as you look over here, it's a, definitely a more different uh, garden because you are you are seeing the the palette that I chose the seven plant palette um, which now includes a little bit of the manzanita bush and also these really cool bush river willows um, I think that's what they're called in the game at least and then from here you kind of see the the unkept side of the garden which is still it still looks pretty uh, but I found that, you know, increasing the amount of space between trees um, really allows the depth to, sh to show through, which is nice. And as we come around this big bush willow tree here, then suddenly what we're found with is we're smack dab in the middle of the water garden. 
And so that just that sense of discovery, that that reason to go down that path uh, when you can choose other ones is how you get to this particular garden. So here you can see that whole uh, that whole tour from the air. You can see how the <laughs> you can see how the shapes all worked out together. You can see that really harsh channel moving across into this really soft uh, round pool. And then the whole pool itself, uh, it's uh, it's a play on the word water because you have these ripples, but of course those are not actually water. The water is moving down the channel and then it disappears. Um, so there's so there's very little bits of, of water in here, um, which also helps with the, the California gardening uh, issue because there's not a whole lot of water to evaporate. Um, it's pretty much gone by the time it recirculates from the top down to the bottom. And there will be a headwater here. Um, I just haven't quite figured out what this area is going to be yet. Another important element that I wanted to address is that mostly everything you see in nature is in odds or uh, in design. It's called the, the power of threes. Um, in this case, I broke that a little bit. So I have the three, the water lilies here, but you notice I only have two accent trees of the river bush willow. Um, and for some reason it works, and I think this is why. It's because I have each of the the, the specimen trees on power points in the, the angle of the river. So I've got this on that point, and I've got this on that point. And I think that's why I can get away with two without it looking too weird. It doesn't look super symmetrical. They, they kind of look like they are... They look like they're placed, but they don't look so um, symmetrical to be unnatural. This area here is going to be the modern tea garden, um, which is taking some inspiration from the Huntington. Again, um, in the Rose Garden, they have this uh, definitely more modern uh, glass and steel building. And I wanted to have that same kind of feel here, especially with all the super geometric uh, influences. I think that black, uh, black steel and glass building is gonna look really good. I think Kimberly's gonna do that one. Um, if not, I have some other people that might uh, be willing to try that out. And then the last thing I wanted to uh, wanted to say is that this is a dedicated garden, and I've dedicated it to Delay Designer because she has been absolutely awesome um, in promoting me, in you know making sure that people know who I am. I, I cannot thank her enough, and so this is the only way that I can I can probably do it. Um, so I have dedicated this whole garden to Delay Designer. It's called the Delay Designer Water Garden. Um, there's a little plaque there. And I think I think that's we're gonna make this a pattern. So every major garden is going to have some sort of designation. It's gonna be dedicated to somebody who's important, who has helped me so much. Um, I cannot thank her enough. She has just been an absolute... <laughs> It's been incredible. Every every chance she gets, she seems to promote me, and I just I cannot thank her enough. So I think that's where we'll leave it today. Um, if you liked what you saw today, you know what to do. I don't expect... <laughs> I'm just going to say this. This was probably a two-part uh, garden that I did here in, in one part. Um, I would not expect that level again. I would, I would expect something this size or even bigger to be in two parts, three parts or something like that, because this is a lot of, uh, even though the migration garden I could easily do in a single part, it wasn't super, uh, dense and it really, it really wasn't that hard to do once I had the, the terrain and stuff in. It's a very sparse garden, um, and its power comes from its, its, uh, sparseness. This garden, however, is very, very complicated. Not only with the channel and making sure that looked like it actually had water flowing through it, even though there's no water in it, um, to make sure the path worked with the terrain and to make sure the terrain worked with everything else, not to mention all of the, uh, the blending and the coloring um, and then the different levels, different terraces and stuff like that. Um, this would have definitely been a two-part garden, um, so I would expect in the future for Planet Botanic uh, big garden additions, we're definitely going to be doing them in parts. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, I know I have said no animals 
that's not going to be true because the only way that I can seem to get people to walk through this this place is to have animals. So major exhibits, um, so say like the Chinese garden is going to have an animal exhibit or the Japanese garden is going to have an animal exhibit or the waterfront garden or the jungle garden is going to have an exhibit. So there will be animal exhibits. They are going to not be like a zoo. They're definitely going to be more treated like a garden. Um, but they will be there. I think one of the, the really cool ones is going to be the modern garden is going to be a modern walk through peacock garden. Um, I think that'll I think that'll be really really awesome. So I think I'll leave it there today. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. See you later, guys.